Hey everybody, I'm Carrie, this is Mike, and we've been living in our bus, Bussy McBuzzface, for two months now. What we wanted to do is just take a second to go over and kind of give you a review of different areas of our build and how we rate, uh, you know, living in the bus and, and how our bus has... Uh, uh, been functioning for us. Been functioning for us. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We're going to go through our entire bus, each room or area at a time, and tell you how everything has been working in each area. So starting with the living room slash dining room area, first of all, I can tell you the couch has been a total win. No complaints on the couch department. And we do have a good comparison because this dinette breaks down into a couch where we put all these pillows along the, the back edge. So we know what it's like to kind of build your own sofa in your bus too. And we have a good comparison about which one is more comfortable. And it's the sofa by all means. Uh, the dinette has been functioning great. Uh, we're not even using all the storage space under the dinettes. Oh, I should show you the small improvement we made on our dinettes. We used to have to move this whole back board in order to remove the bottom board to access the storage, but Mike has since cut along this with the circular saw and added hinges, so now all we have to do is lift this to access the storage underneath. Really briefly, the media cabinet has been working great to keep all our stuff organized in storage, and the TV has been working great. We love being able to move it around to this position or over here, wherever we want it. And I think that the only thing that hasn't been 100% perfect in our living room area is the belts on these bookshelves. For one thing, this belt was not real leather, so it broke. But even for the belt that is real leather that's working well, you can't open it because where it's screwed in, there's no, there's, it's too tight. There's too much tension and you can't, you can't undo the belt to get the books out, which is okay because right here, everything fits over the belt, so it's still working. But in the future, we might end up changing that. We're not sure yet. Uh, the bus engine. It gets hot when we go up hills. So um, that's that's kind of a detractor. Another weird thing is that uh, when I, there's no, like when you're driving and you have just the right amount of pedal to keep a, a normal speed, this bus doesn't do that. It's either accelerating or not accelerating. So that's kind of weird. Other than that, um, we have a powerful engine. We can do 75 miles an hour. Um, so other than that, like it, it's it's, it's good. It's it's good, but there's room for improvement, so we're working on that. And you'll see some of the stuff we're doing to address our heat issues in another video. As far as driving goes for me personally, it's kind of stressful a little bit. Not in a, uh, it's scary to drive the bus feeling. It's more is, is my home going to break down? Is somebody going to crash into my home? You know, that kind of thing. I, that'll probably pass over time as I get more comfortable but I'll, I'll tell you that uh, uh, moving day is a stressful day for me, so. Yeah, you're ready to like be done at the end I just, of the yeah. day. We get to a place to park and you don't even waste time getting level. You're like, I'm done. I'm done, yeah, I need a drink. <laughs> <laughs> so the next section we wanna talk about is, is heating the bus, not necessarily just the wood burning stove because it's actually kind of been a system. And I would say that the true heroes of this story are actually the diesel heaters. Uh, we use the diesel heaters almost exclusively almost in Colorado. They got us home safe during our ice storm. Um, but how they're used now is a little bit differently. Uh, we use them, basically I use them a lot in the morning to get the bus warm enough to get out of bed because sometimes it's pretty chilly. We don't run them at night and then warm enough to come in here and build this. And that's when the wood stove takes over and uh, we get a ton of joy. And this thing is awesome. Zero complaints, five star awesomeness. Um, this is, does the bulk of our heating. And so we basically just use the diesel heaters 
to get the bus warm enough to come out and build a fire, <laughs> which sounds kind of lazy, but that's the way we built the bus to, to make it just comfortable all the time. So um, as far as heating the bus concern, this thing does a fantastic job to the point that at times we have to actually open windows to uh, uh, keep the bus comfortable to be in here. Okay, the kitchen. Uh, there's so many things to talk about in the kitchen. I'm just going to breeze through it really quickly. Um, the overall amount of storage in this kitchen, totally five stars because I was able to bring everything I absolutely wanted from home. I didn't have to leave anything behind. Uh, the trash slide out, five stars for sure. And it has been great having a full size garbage can instead of a short garbage can because there are times when Mike is here when he's not at work for four days in a row and before the next time we're going to be driving somewhere to even be able to throw the trash away. So this has been awesome. Uh, our used sink that we got uh, second hand has been awesome. The dish rack up here has been five stars absolutely beyond a shadow of a doubt game changer awesome yeah, like so I'm, amazing i'm telling you guys we don't even have to put the dishes away when we drive they stay up here this thing has been awesome um our used stove slash oven has been awesome i think we got this for 50 bucks on craigslist um the lighter igniter thing wasn't working but i think mike you got that it. fixed again so mm -hmm. so that's fixed now um we had we cooked our whole thanksgiving dinner in this oven and on this stove top so i have zero complaints in the stove or oven department um and the refrigerator has probably been the only thing in the whole kitchen to give us some trouble and that is I should probably let Mike talk about that. The refrigerator actually has not done well. This is the Norcold refrigerator that uh, we, we installed and there's a video of our installation. I, the problem with it is the way that it uh, handles uh, turns on sometimes it turns on and only the compressor comes on and if the fan doesn't come on with the compressor it won't get cold and so um, the thing inevitably will stay on like forever if you do that and it can wear out the pump. So that has been a real problem um, with this. And if I had to do it again, I would probably put, since we're running on 120 volts anyway, I probably would have just put like an apartment refrigerator in here which, and not wasted my which, time. Yeah, which we didn't think in the beginning. In the beginning, we were like, oh, we're not going to put a regular appliance in there. We're going to put an RV appliance That's in there. Exactly. Like we thought we were being so smart about it, but... This it's thing has been just a nightmare. One problem after another, Just to yeah. keep going, it's been a nightmare. And it, I mean, like we've learned how to get around its little drawbacks and stuff, but it just is like, ugh. So, yeah, if we had to do it again, not this fridge. Yeah, so everything else in the kitchen gets five stars. The refrigerator gets one star. Yeah, the horrible, <laughs> it's been a horrible thing. So... Because our refrigerator is giving us problem, it segues perfectly into our solar. So we have 1,500 watts of solar on the roof. We have five, uh, well, 500 usable amp hours of battery. We have 1,000 amp hours of AGM. So um, because our refrigerator is stupid, it will stay on when it, when it turns itself off. When it turns itself back on again, it won't turn on with a fan. It will stay on all night and drain our battery. So what we have to do in order to accomplish this is to, we actually literally have to turn off our inverter before we go to bed. And when I get up in the morning, one of the first things I do is turn the inverter back on and start the process of keeping our food cool and safe in there. Overnight, it stays safe uh, at safe temperatures. So, um, but learning to turn off the inverter with this switch right here, thank you, Gabe, um, ha was a game changer. We went from chasing this battery, chasing numbers, having to run the generator fairly often, try to keep up with it because we built this thing where we left things plugged in and it was becoming like a lot of parasitic draw, sort of parasitic draw. And it added up to us having to run the generator quite often to bring the batteries back to 100%. And once we started turning this off at night, the batteries totally catch up um you know usually i don't know one o'clock two o'clock we're at 100 percent and we're able to uh just repeat that cycle so as long as we're not running into too many days of clouds our solar system is actually 
totally adequate and I love it. Next up, the bathroom. I'm going to start with washing machine and I'm going to say um, it hasn't been a game changer at this point because I think I've only done two loads of laundry in this washing machine in the whole two months we've lived here. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. But um, and we have also gone to the laundromat, but we only did three loads of laundry at the laundromat. So we have not done a lot of laundry in the, in the length of time we've been living this bus, like what, only one load per week on average? So um, it's nice to have that we have the washing machine here. Oh, I should also say it takes anywhere from like so far eight to 13 gallons um, to do a load. It depends on the size of the load, how much water it uses. So um, I don't know, it could come in really handy and we might really appreciate having it at some point, but I feel like it's too soon to really make that call yet. I, I don't really know how important I'm finding it to have the washing machine on board as of yet. The shower, however, has been awesome and has performed in every way that we needed it to. We did have to add um, a shower curtain, which a lot of you were suggesting online that we use a clear shower curtain so you can still see the picture in line or inside. So that's what we did on that. Um, everything has been working great until yesterday when I tried to take a shower, I turned on the hot water or, you know, when you turn on the water, that turns on the inline water heater. And for some reason, the, sh the temperature never got all the way up to where it was set. It stayed at 97 degrees. So I had to take my whole shower in like a lukewarm shower. But we're, we're, I think we've figured out the fix to this problem. And Mike, you can tell me if I'm saying this right. But um, it's best with an inline water heater not to turn on your cold water at all. You just want to do the hot on full blast. But the shower that we bought, instead of having a hot knob and a cold knob separately, it has the one knob that kind of switches between hot and cold. And we're finding that that knob is not working well with the inline water heater. It would have been better to have a hot knob and a cold knob so we could just turn the hot water on and set the temperature at the temperature we want it. Um, but let I think we have a great fix for that. I'll let Mike take over here. But let me just elaborate a little on what Carrie says because this might be important to somebody building this. Um, the amount of water going through the hot water heater on the shower when it's turned on full, uh, fully on in hot position because the water in our fresh tank is so cold the water heater can't heat it up at that rate and so in order to make it um, work better if we turn down the amount of hot water or water going through the hot water heater to a lower flow rate then it, then it would hotter. have more time to heat that water and therefore you'd have hotter water In summary, you should have a separate hot and cold water knob so that you can adjust the hot water flow to your to your shower. So if it's not getting hot enough, you could just turn down the hot water flow a little bit, which will allow it to spend more time inside the water heater and therefore get hotter. Now the composting toilet is kind of its own whole topic in itself so we're going to be doing a whole video about that in the future but there are a few things that i will say about it real quickly i think i'll just talk in like true not true on all the things that you've heard about a composting toilet so if you've heard that there is no smell to the compost even when it's there's poo in it or if you've heard that there's no smell when a person goes one person goes to the bathroom and then the next person goes in there there's no smell true totally true there's no stinky pooey smell to the composting toilet and it doesn't smell stinky and pooey in this room or in this area at all ever 100 percent true not true is that you can that two people can be using this composting toilet for a whole month before it needs changed 
absolutely not true. We've not been able to go a whole month with this toilet with two of us using it. We barely go two weeks before we're changing out that compost. I think at one point we went two and a half, maybe pushing three weeks, but like you couldn't even hardly turn the crank at that point. I think if we, if we didn't use, if we didn't put our toilet paper into it, I think we could eke it out quite a, a bit, bit further longer. but I don't I don't care I don't, even, I don't want I, to do that personally I don't even think the toilet paper is an issue I think that maybe um, if some people are going into public restrooms maybe 50% of the time and they're only using their own composting toilet the other 50% of the time then maybe yeah maybe just one person could could go a whole month using it or maybe two people could go a whole month if they were only using it sporadically but for two people to be using it regularly we're changing the compost every two weeks which is no big deal I'm not complaining about that I'm just uh, clarifying the truths and untruths about composting toilets Oh wait, one more thing on the topic of washing machine. I should mention the laundry drawer. Laundry drawer has been fantastic. There are no regrets. This gets six out of five stars. We love the laundry drawer. Okay, for the bedroom area, can I just say, we have more than ample closet space. It is awesome. I have plenty of room for keeping all my clothes. Oh, and I have a mirror on my closet door now. That's always exciting. Um, the drawers are awesome. We have extra cupboard space just for personal items like my arts and crafts and kinds of things like that. Mike hasn't even used up all the space in his closet. He's still got empty spaces in here. We definitely have enough storage in our bus. As far as the bed area goes, I haven't had to change the sheets enough times to be irritated with that yet, but I can talk about what it's like having to climb over the other person every night because I'm the person who sleeps on the far side. So I'm, and I'm the person who has insomnia. So I'm climbing over Mike every single night around three or four in the morning, maybe even two in the morning, getting up. Sometimes I'm getting up twice or even three times at night. I've been pretty irritated with climbing over Mike. And if there was one thing I could change in this bus build, it would be to make this a king size bed with no storage over the top. So each of us could climb in our own side and have our pillows up at that end of the bed. That's like really the one thing I would change in this whole bus build is just making it a king size bed so there would be no crawling over. Storage. Storage, outside storage has actually been adequate. I think I uh, overpacked. I put, uh, you know, like we have, you know, extra things that we probably don't need. The peat moss you can't buy though in like a little nice little thing like this. You have to buy this enormous thing. So that, that was handy. But like I have, I think I brought every extension cord I owned for some reason and they're all here. <laughs> and so between this and the other two on the other side, um, I could probably weed out a lot of things to um, uh, make uh, our storage even go further than it has already on the outside. So, but um, up to that, totally adequate for what we needed. I, I'm not like wishing I had room for something like we're good. We definitely need to talk about this little guy, the little side vent Mike added to our black water tanks. And a lot of you were commenting and making suggestions to us that we needed to run a vent pipe all the way up to the roof of the bus. But Mike did it this way and it's working so well that we're not gonna have to run a vent all the way up to the roof. All he had to do was make it come out the side and have it cut at an angle this way. And it totally works. We have had zero, not even a hint of a hint of any smell of sewage in our bus ever since he fixed this. Next up, the deck. The deck is awesome. Zero complaints about the deck. Worth every penny and every hour spent on this thing. Just straight up so we could see over these darn mesquite trees, man. And that was a lot of hours, huh? It was a lot of hours. <laughs> yeah, this is great having the view. It's exactly everything Mike suggested it would be. This is, I mean, this is the spot that Mike was able to see that bobcat. It's amazing up here. I'm like looking, there's a little chipmunk under that bush over there. 
Aww. we would just never would have seen that you know it it really makes it so you can just see over the the nearby vegetation and get a real clear picture of, of your surroundings that you just can't see from ground level so this was truly epic and making it so accessible has been awesome and having places to store things up here it's just really really good it's just been a wonderful experience having the deck i think the only thing i would change is the decking material super not happy with that and so uh down the line there's going to be some video of us tearing this off and putting in planks or something we yeah decided we did layers and layers of this deck coat what kind of coating was this it was a deck rejuvenating paint meant to go over wood and yeah it was a total fail yeah because the the moisture has soaked in the wood is starting to swell up and warp in a couple of places it's yeah. it's ridiculous it's going to be no good in in a year or so yeah so, so we'll be redoing just the wood part of the deck unfortunately but, but yeah but the having the deck has been superb totally good i love it well i think that pretty much sums it up for our bus build review for today however we will be doing a live q a coming up very soon probably in about one week so if there's anything we haven't covered about the bus that you're curious about please leave your questions in the comments and we're going to be picking as many questions as we can to go over in our live q a coming up soon thanks guys for watching like and subscribe if you like this video share it with all of your friends obviously <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you guys in one week Bye-bye.